Of course, you'll never be driving your car under such conditions, but do you realize that even on ordinary roads like this, road bumps actually keep smashing up at the wheels with tons of force? And because these road shocks are unevenly distributed, the frame and body are under constant twisting strains that also represent tons of force. Yes, even in everyday driving, our Chevrolet has to take a lot of punishment from forces like these and from other elements too. Well, welcome back guys. I'd much rather be showing you a video on something else. As you can see, I'm deep in the heart of replacing windshield glass and seal, but unfortunately, the seal I ordered, although technically correct, is not going to work. I should have guessed when from one reputable parts house compared to another, this seal was a third of the cost. Hmm. Anyway, we will get into that later when I get all the parts. What we're going to deal with now is something I personally have never done on one of these. That is the care, the loving care and maintenance of the double action shock absorber, the lever type shock absorbers. I never got into one, so this is going to be an adventure for me as well. Now the rears are um, much more simple units where they just bolt onto the frame and then you have looks like little stabilizer links going down to the uh, the mounts for the leaf springs. The fronts, however, are a vital part of your upper control arm. I don't think you can see that. The front shock absorbers, however, are a vital part of the upper control arm. The whole upper control arm there is the lever for the shock absorber. Now the full-on rebuilding of these units is kind of a specialized service. So I don't know what I really see myself getting into here other than pulling them off, cleaning them up, replacing seals and gaskets, filling them with fluid, and trying them. They are a very simple mechanism at the heart of it. Uh, I don't know. This is going to be an adventure. So let's get started. Well, we're going to go ahead and start on the back here. You can see the rear unit attached to the frame there. And there's a link that goes down to your spring mount. And this side has the link, although it is shot. That side does not. You can see the stud next to the yellow part of the jack stand. You can see the stud right there and it has been lost, probably picked up in the tire of an 18-wheeler decades ago. And to get this off, we just have two bolts where my socket is, so we'll go out there and do that. But man, this fuel tank is looking sharp. If you're new here, you ought to go back and check out the video on that. That was a great moment in video history. Now this may tickle. Okay, there it is. Obviously been leaking. You can see we have a broken stud here and the other broken stud is down there So we'll have to get those off um, I'm gonna mark this as left hand for now. It may say it on there on the casting. I don't know um, Get the other one off and then we'll move up front and that's gonna be a much bigger ordeal Well, I've been scraping for a while going through the decades of gunk we've got the Korean conflict here and Eisenhower's administration there and there's a big chunk of LBJ alright so here's what we got going on with the front end on this car 
If I go like this, you can see we got quite a bit of slop, and that is all in the steering gear. So we will take care of that later in a different video, but I wanted to explain what that is, and that trans translates to a lot of slop going down the road in the steering wheel. It's not a very enjoyable ride when you're doing that. Another issue I see is the stabilizer links. Bushings are completely worn out, so we will have to uh, replace those. Turn the brake drum here, get in here. Your spindle pivots on what is called a king pin, and that is a straight pin right in here. You can see how this pivots. Pull on the bottom, you can see I've got wear down here. Not terribly much, but it's enough. So I have ordered, you can see wear on the top also. So the pin is loose in the bronze bushings. So I have ordered a king pin set. Now you are most likely here because of the shock absorbers. I am actually going to be taking care of all of these issues at the same time. So I will be removing the king pin, get the brakes out of the way, and um, be messing with that, but you don't need to concern yourself with that if you're only here for the shock absorber and the upper control arm. Now if you are interested in replacing kingpins, stabilizer link, tightening up your steering gear, there will be another video on that coming. Like I said, I'm going to do it all at the same time. For now, we're going to focus on this. And if you're just here for the ride, well, God bless you. You're special. Now I have a jack under the lower control arm because our shock lever is actually the upper control arm. You can see it comes to the pivot here where the more modern suspension would have a ball joint. And what happens if you pop your ball joints off the steering knuckle? Well, your spring's going to expand and things are going to fly and you're going to end up in ER. So, jack under there. Or you can lift the whole car and set it down on jack stands under the control arm. You just got to keep that spring compressed. We've got a pinch bolt here and here. And I'm going to remove this threaded bushing on the back side. I bet you a hundred bucks this hasn't been done since the assembly line. Good thing there's no way for you to know. Here's your threaded bushing. All right, now I'm going to undo the front clamp bolt. Uh, let's see. I need... Now we remove the front bushing. Alright, now I'm going to remove the clamp bolt on the top end of the steering knuckle. Okay, you can see I must not have enough weight taken off because our 
piece is all the way down to the bottom there. It's not centered, so I'm just going to raise the jack up a little. There we go. That ought to do it. Now I take quarter inch Allen wrench. Get that on there. Now we have some neoprene seals here. I'm gonna save on if they're good. And they actually, I mean, that's impressive. They look good. Not cracked, flexible, wow. All right, now our front shock is obviously able to come off. We'll get those bolts, three bolts on top, off. And I'm going to try to scrounge and find my spring clamps so that I can uh, release the tension here and take the jack to the other side. Oh, and FYI, I don't know if you could tell as I was pulling this out, that is an eccentric there, a cam, and that will affect your alignment. Okay, allow me to repeat myself just in case you missed it. You know, maybe you nodded off to sleep or got to thinking about a bratwurst with mustard or the little woman, every time she comes in the room, she can't keep her hands off you. Darn it! Happens every time. Well, um, this video is primarily on the shock absorbers. I am also doing one at the same time about taking the slop out of the steering. So that's why the... Uh, brakes are gone, the steering knuckles gone, I've removed the stabilizer bar link. That video will be coming right after this one, but this we're just focused on the shock absorber. So all you have to do, support the bottom or the lower control arm, remove these bushings and the pin, and then you are free to remove the three nuts to get the shock absorber on, off. So let's do that. And let's do it quick before the wife comes back in the room. Well, it's back to cleaning and scraping for me. I'm going to go ahead and get the other side off without you. And we will meet back together on the workbench. Alright, well, I had spent a good half an hour scraping crud off this right rear and 
had a huge mound of dirt and debris and um, just on a whim I took them all took all the pieces to work with me and put it in the heated wash cabinet and this is the result this one was completely caked with crud and it looks great um, I don't want to get anything inside the packing and inside the cylinders in here so I'm not going to soak them in anything I'm not going to media blast them I'm going to do my best cleaning them up with the wire wheel and then finishing up by hand and then we'll wipe them down and paint them this is the knuckle support that I've already got ready to paint so that looks good and just a couple things I would check or be concerned about is whether or not the shaft so on the rear you have a shaft going through here on the fronts of course you got it going all the way through whether or not you've got any play in the bushings in the shaft and in the bushings these feel really nice and tight um, now it's obvious there were some leaks through the years I wouldn't be overly concerned about seepage in fact I think you can expect seepage out of the packings um, after all they did put fill plugs in you know that was a common thing that a mechanic would need to check is whether or not the shock absorbers were full of fluid so anyway I mean if it's a steady drip or just gushing out from where the shaft goes into obviously that needs to be replaced um, but if it's just a slow steady slow seepage during use of the car I would not be concerned at all about that and keep in mind guys even in the book the techs of the day the service techs of the day did not do any maintenance beyond making sure they were full of oil these were sold as a unit and if it needed to be fixed the they would go to the parts man and pull this off the shelf and the tech would replace the entire thing they did not service these that was a factory service only deal and you can do that too you can go to chevs of the 40s the filling station if you know of another parts house that caters to these 40s era cars they you can send yours in and uh, as a core and they'll exchange it send you a good one back there is a website out there also which is probably the machine shop where they rebuild them for those parts houses and I really don't know how involved it would be it seems to me if you wanted to get these off you would cut the weld press off your sides of your control arm linkage and then that shaft would probably be free to press out one way or another and then of course you have a little rock rocker arm in there um, to deal with this is the same way only it's just got one side um, I don't think it's impossible to do what one man made another man can fix but but I find it interesting it's not even something that the dealers had to mess with back in the day
gonna go ahead and dump out this fluid. I'm gonna clean this cover extra well, and then I'm gonna clear coat it just to keep it from rusting on us. And we need to make some gaskets. I had very thin cork gaskets on it. Hmm. Here you can see the rocker arm in there. You just have two cylinders with two pistons, springs under them, and there's an orifice down here between the two cylinders, and it's just shoving that fluid back and forth, and that's what that's what slows the bounce down. Five D dash forty-eight. Crusty. Crusty and dusty. Making a mess. Okay, well, I put fluid in this front one. That'll help clean all the dry junk out of there, but I had to see if it was going to work, and it's definitely working. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw the cover back on, fill it up completely, and make sure the, the packings didn't get dried out and ruined from use without oil. And if I don't get an obvious leak in a reasonable amount of time, I'll call them good. And hopefully they just, uh, over the years, they just slowly leaked out and no one bothered to refill them or check them. Well, it looks like we're just going to luck out on this customer's car anyway. Um, it was quite wet coming out where the packing is. At least I'm assuming there's a packing in there. I keep saying that. Um, it was quite wet here, like it was dripping out, and I kept, I wiped it off twice. And now it's been a good 15-20 minutes and there's no new stuff. And that could have just been running down from when I filled it or from brake cleaner getting in there. So, And it very well could be, you know, these were dried out and once they've gotten wet, that helps seal them up again.
one. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. If the other one turns out just fine, like this one, I do know where some single action shock absorbers are. And if nothing else, I'll make a separate video on pulling the on pulling the levers off and uh, completely disassembling them and see if we can get it back together. All right, well, a guy needs some shock absorber links for the rear, as you well know. So in the old parts book, I think this is from 1950, doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, shock absorber link, 42 to 48, all passenger, rear, 5316364. If you look that up on eBay, um, you will likely find some as did I. So I bought this set, original new old stock parts, for about $45 I think it was for the set. A buck ten in 1950. Wow. Anyway, um, the usual part parts houses that I use that I mention all the time, you can find them. Um, one of them actually has quite a few old, new old stock that they found in a warehouse or something. And so they have a bunch of originals. You can find just the bushings if you want to make your own stud. Um, or build, if you need to build a whole complete unit. You know, a guy could take some pipe and some rod and make one and make it fit bushings. Um, if you don't care about original originality, you could buy what they call a Heim joint. I'm sure you can get a 3 8 Heim joint and just make your own like that. A lot of options. Um, I went ahead and got originals, so I'm going to squirt some paint on them, and away we go. A buck ten. Now I neglected to show you on the right side shock absorbers what was under these caps. So you've got two here on the rear and one on each side, one low and one high on the front shock absorber. There and there. Those are your check valves and that is what opens up and lets fluid go one way or the other and it, so it can't go both ways basically. So when you take off one of the caps, this is what you're going to see, a little spring-loaded valve, and uh, it just simply goes down in there, and is like that. Now they were working on the side that we've already painted, so I wasn't too concerned. Um, if it was obvious that it was only working one way, or it did not want to work at all going one way, um, uh, then we would want to look into the check valves because for some reason one would not or both would not be opening. But we are good to go. Now we've come this far, we need something to put back in it. So just what are you going to use for shock absorber fluid? Well, 
even in the original manual, it was specified as shock absorber fluid. Now it says it was based with mineral oil, but they didn't divulge any information uh, what the additives were. So apparently it was on the need to know basis and nobody else needed to know what GM shock absorber fluid was made of. Now if you go online and get to reading in forums about what guys have used for this in the past, um, there seem to be three most common types of fluid and then some other stuff. Jack oil is very common, power steering fluid, ATF, this was my idea but I don't think it'll last that long. Um, and then you get into things like non-detergent oils, hydraulic oils, things of that nature. I have elected to use power steering fluid. Now a lot of guys, perhaps even more, use jack oil or recommended using jack oil. Um, but I am just uncertain of the properties of that in freezing temperatures. I know power steering fluid continues to work in freezing temperatures. Um, now, having said that, it's unlikely a classic car gets out in freezing temperatures very often, but still, you never know. So that is what I'm going to use. Um, the parts houses I have already mentioned, they do sell it by the court, but it's like $32 or $64 or $128, probably the first, but I feel like being independent and spending a couple dollars instead of a whole lot more. So, power steering fluid it's going to be. Let's put it back in. What a pig. I'm sure that's great on new paint. Okay, I've got my mount pads wire brushed off so they're nice and clean. They did sit nice and straight on there again. Get this on here. And our blackened hardware. Alright, I'm ready to connect our upper control arm of our shock to our steering knuckle support. So I'm going to raise that jack enough. That'll bring that in line.
All right, well I've stretched my old seals over the control arms and they've survived so far. Hopefully they make it to the end. We're gonna thread our pin in from the front and we need to center it on the knuckle support. So this center portion needs to be centered where it's threading into. Left hand thread. Just like that. And this is where it would be helpful if you remember what position it was in before you took it out. bolt in. Looking good. Okay, we're going to install the rear bushing on the pin. Just a matter of getting it started and you want to make sure this knuckle support stays in the center here. It'll be one of your things to watch. Now we will run, run the front bushing in. And when we do this, we need to go until we have about 20 to 40 thousandths between the control arm and the hex. Zerk is pointing down. Okay, I can get 30 thousandths in there. There's 35, which I cannot get in there. So I'm going to call that good. We're going to get our seals over. Get them turned or This one's being a little bugger. We'll get her. We'll get her. There we go. Yeah. Something still isn't sitting right with that one either. around here there we go that feels much better hey now we can 
lock our front bushing in place. Okay, so there is the front shock absorber completely installed. Let's go to the back and get that one in. And I feel now that we're together, I just need to review it once again real quick. Your alignment as far as caster and camber are done together adjusting the pivot pin with the eccentric on it. So you will loosen the bolt. You can remove the front grease fitting, stick your Allen wrench in through the hole, and grab the the socket head of that pin through the front and you will adjust both together it's gonna move um, it's gonna move the top of the knuckle support in or out and at the same time going forward or backwards depending on what you're doing so a guy could take measurements and get yourself real close but it would always be a good idea to recheck the alignment once you've done this job now the rears are so much simpler, they're practically a pleasure. Indeed. You know you got the right one if when you put it up against the frame, you've got the fill plug on top, the link or the arm is going towards the rear. No, you can't see anything. Okay. Now the rears are so much simpler, they're practically a pleasure. Now the rears are so much simpler, they're practically a pleasure. Practically a pleasure. Practically a pleasure. I wasn't going to crawl under there if I didn't have to. Well, nothing to it when you crawl under there. Goodness. Good governor. Okay, get the other one in. All right, the bevel on the bottom stud was not wanting to grab in the bracket, and uh, so I put large C-clamp on it. The problem is the stud is suspended in rubber bushings, and if it doesn't grab here, it's just going to spin in there. But uh, we got her now. So there you go, guys. There is your general overview of the removal, cleanup, testing and replacing of the 39 through 48 Chevrolet lever action dual action shock absorbers. Um, you could use this as a general guide for the single action basically the same you just don't have as many moving parts and the following years after 48 different part numbers a little bit different shock absorbers but basically the same thing. Basically what I'm trying to get at is if you have bolt-on lever action shock absorbers, there you go. 
Now where do we go from here? I've still got to finish up the loose steering issues. There'll be a video following with that. As soon as I get another piece of glass, I'll get the windshield done and there'll be a video on that. I've got a whole stash of parts for the 62 Corvair front end. There'll be a video on that. Plus some other interesting things coming along on the way. But for now, I've got to get back to work on these other two shock absorbers, finish up the steering, and I think there was something else. I don't know. Anyway, God bless you guys. Thanks for joining me. I hope you had a little bit of fun. We will see you on the next one.